I'm Stanley Cohn. I am a professor of biology. I'm also the chair of the biological sciences department here at DePaul, and I teach cell biology. Well, the concept I wanted to present was the movement of chromosomes during cell division. That is, how do chromosomes uh, structurally organize in the mitotic spindle, that is, the structure that separates chromosomes during cell division. I mean, one of the most important things that I want to get across in the cell biology course is for the students to understand that it's not a static process, that, that cells are not these pictures that they see in the textbooks from an electron micrograph or a light micrograph of cells just kind of sitting there with all these structures, that it's actually a very dynamic process. For many of the types of processes of cell biology, I like to find ways to get the students more engaged in it, so I often have them do either physical demonstrations or they do a reenactment. So in the case of mitosis, I often have the students do a reenactment of it in which students play different types of components of the cell division process. We take uh, two students and we put them back to back. Two chromosomes, when they're duplicated, remain attached at an area called the centromere, which is a constriction site on the chromosome. And so what I do is I kind of have a set of string and I, I kind of just hold it around their waist and, and have them hold it so uh, they're back to back and they can't move apart from each other. So whatever they do, they have to do as a unit. So this duplicated chromosome, I then take them through the different stages of mitosis. So at first, we have the two other students who are forming these microtubules, which I just use long wooden dowels. And these microtubules are outside the nucleus at first, the nucleus being the containment area for the chromosomes, so the chromosomes aren't interacting at all with these microtubules. Then the next stage in mitosis is prometaphase, where the nuclear envelope breaks down, that is, it kind of dissolves, and now the chromosomes are able to interact with those microtubules, and little protein areas on the chromosomes known as kinetochores, which are directly adjacent to where they're attached, can now attach onto the microtubules and start pulling along them. So one of the duplicated chromosomes starts pulling one way, and then the one on its back tries to pull on microtubules the other direction. So they, by pulling back and forth, they eventually orient themselves so that one of the duplicated chromosomes is facing one way, and one of the duplicated chromosomes is facing the other way, because this set of microtubules is organized uh, in a bipolar fashion from two different sites. And then the next stage is metaphase, where the two chromosome, the two, the duplicated chromosomes, the two sister chromatids, are in the middle of the cell, equidistant from the two sites at which these microtubules form. Then at what's the next stage known as anaphase, now the, the two sister chromatids uh, are separated from one another so that they can each pull along their own uh, set of microtubules to the two tips. And then in the final stage is telophase where each of them now reforms into their own nucleus and the cell divides and you have two different cells again. So it kind of shows you how the chromosome gets duplicated, acts as a unit, then separates from each other, each side pulling towards its own way, and then the cell divides, essentially creating two new daughter cells uh, with the same genetic information that the first one had. By doing these kinds of processes, where you're reenacting or having the students kind of show how a particular process works, it allows the students in the class to be able to really visualize a particular type of concept. So after you've already talked about it or read about it, they can, they can really see how different types of components and processes work together. It really solidifies their knowledge of how these different components work together.